Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today I want to show you this monstrosity right here. We're actually playing Fallout 4 on the ROG Li at 1080p with 60 frames. Now I'm sure a lot of people will think, eh, well that you can do that already on the screen here. You know, it's got FSR and of course it has a very powerful GPU CPU combo in there. It's great, right? The ROG Li is an incredibly powerful machine and it is a portable gaming machine. But what do you do when you're traveling with the ROG and you want to play on a bigger screen, maybe a portable screen like that, what can you do? And how can you power all this from just the ROG? So that's what we're going to have a look at in today's video. I'm going to show you my way of, I guess, how I'm going to use the ROG and this portable screen on a bit of travel and of course I'm going to share with you where you can get some of these cables and uh, the screen, don't worry about it. It's a very old screen. I'll try and find something very similar on Amazon for you and put the links there. So let's get started by rolling the intro and see how we can get this uh, pretty nice setup going. This screen right here is a three-year-old desk lab screen. It's 1080p at 60 frames. It's terrible colors, it's terrible contrast, and the brightness isn't that great. However, the powerful thing about it is it has two USB-C ports. It is also touch screen, and it can be powered by a micro USB cable. And of course, for those folks who love controllers, we got ourselves a PS5 controller that works wirelessly because the ROG Ally, or at least Windows 11, supports this guy right here. So happy days. The game is launched via Steam, which has full DualSense support. It again will depend on the game that you're playing on the support. So let's jump into the cables. So the first thing we need to do is split this USB-C port out into multiple USBs or normal ones and actually one USB-C and a HDMI port, a full size HDMI port and that'll make sense in a second. So I've got one of these right here. This is unbranded. You can get whatever you want, uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't need to be anything super. It is only going to be playing back 1080p and the power requirements are pretty low for this screen. What's important is this USB-C plug right here that's going to go into the ROG Ally and it's going to give us three USB standard ports and a USB-C port. The really important part here is that USB-C port because this mod or this way of using ROG Ally drains the battery very, very quickly. So we wanna power it at the same time. To power that, I've got my 90 watt brick for my MacBook with a USB-C plug. And you know what? Hey, anyone will work as long as it's enough to power the ROG Ally. At the end of the day, you just wanna make sure that you've got enough power. If you're on a plane and you're setting this up and people think it's okay, that you've got so many cables that look a little bit strange. What are you building there, my friend? Look, you'll need to have a fairly powerful power plug, and I know planes do have a normal wall plug, and that potentially will work for this because you can plug it into the wall, but you might need an extension and probably a longer cable. All right, let's get on to the more important things, the screen. The screen itself is pretty simple. It's got a little stand at the back. Again, the one I'll link below might be a little bit different, but the idea is that you're going to power these plugs right here, and this is actually a touch screen, and you can get it working with the ROG Ally. What you'll need to do first is power the micro USB. And again, it could be a USB-C if you're using another screen. We're gonna plug that in to the USB port on the ROG Ally now. You'll notice straight away it has power, but it flickers on and off. It's just not quite enough juice. And the touch screen capabilities are not yet connected because it needs a USB-C connection to the side here. Then we're gonna grab a standard USB-C and USB cable, plug it into one of the USB-C ports, and then we're gonna plug that into the ROG Ally. And I'll move this over here for everyone to see. The ROG Ally now has two USBs, and we're gonna plug that in, and this should give us the ability to have this fully powered. So you've got touch screen capabilities and power for this screen. There is now no signal. That's when this cable comes into play. This is a full size HDMI cable on one side and what I would call a mini or micro on the other side that fits this screen. So using this adapter right here, what we're gonna do is just connect the two. Once everything is connected, we can turn off the ROG screen 
and have ourselves a full screen experience right here. That way the GPU doesn't struggle to try and render things twice per se, it has one screen. And of course, we have full control on the touch screen. We have pretty much a large version of the ROG screen. We can bring up the keyboard, which actually is a shortcut up here. So back button up and we can bring ourselves a keyboard. Now gaming peripherals, technically you still have one USB plug left over and you could again split that out into two USBs. Now the performance should be fine because the other two USBs are actually only used for power and moving across the touchscreen capabilities of the ROG and not necessarily anything data heavy. So plugging in another splitter for that spare USB should be enough for you to run a mouse and keyboard. But the ROG Ally is a gaming device that already supports controller type connections. So the best thing to do is wirelessly or via Bluetooth connect this controller right here or via that spare USB port into the USB-C right here. The nice part is that the screen is very thin and you can potentially have it on your lap when you're on a long train ride or a flight. Now since the time we've been doing this video it was at 55% battery. We're at 28 right now and it's using 35 watts to power this experience. It is thinking it's on what I would call performance mode but it is locked in at 60 frames and the performance is pretty darn impressive but that's not really relevant to the actual screen or anything like that it is the powerful ROG ally that's maintaining this so friends this is my solution for a bit of travel you're in a hotel room chuck this on a desk you can play your video game as if you're playing on potentially a large laptop it really depends on the screen so friends thank you very much for watching I hope this was interesting let me know in the comments what you guys think but honestly this is the way I'm going to game when I'm uh, traveling and maybe, maybe I'll take a photo on the plane, see if I can uh, get this nicely set up. It's only three cables, a little adapter and the ROG Ally and this here is thin enough to put in a backpack. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you all in another one. Bye!